Welcome everyone to episode 2 of the play by email multiplayer series between Agrippa, Maxenius, and I in Strategic Command World War 1. So I'm actually just about to load the turn up. I have not seen this. In fact, it's one of my disappointments. I will probably express several times. There doesn't seem to be, there doesn't seem to be a way to <clears throat> um, bring back the replay. We'll probably start at the replay next time. For this video, you gotta see the full process. It's not. It's it's pretty nice. Okay, I'm gonna shut up and listen and watch. Okay, that was a two-two as far as I could tell. Okay, a three-three. Okay, a two-one. Ooh, a four-one. And a one-zero. Um, three-two. Okay, a 2-1, one. a 1-2, one, sorry, um, didn't see that, 3-2, uh, th the submarine's pretty much out of strength, I'm guessing, oh, we saw some movement, perfect, are they going to take the bait, okay, keep moving, 1-1, one, one. that's the last one, <laughs> that's all I could see, so we actually survived it, and we brought their units out. Um, a two, a one, two, I should say. A, a two o. Oh. oh my gosh, four o. Oh. Russell's unit did not survive very well. Ouch, that was impressive. Well, this is gonna be exciting, isn't it? Okay, wow. Uh, I just was not able to, you know, talk fast enough. The Kaiser shall have his revenge, group of Maxenius. That's it's wonderful. <laughs> so we lost our Lodz detachment, and we also lost the first corps for the Belgians. Um, that's the one in the south. That they, they did push aggressively. Oh my gosh, lots of stuff happened. Okay, here we go. Be advised that the enemy may decide to use unrestricted naval warfare against our convoy routes, bringing supplies to the UK by placing naval units on the hexes marked with a merchant ship flag flying a British flag. Merchant ship flying a British flag. Do do do. These. Um, uh, they could shut down our convoy routes, e oh, even if only temporarily. This could have a dramatic impact on our income. It is therefore strongly recommended that we maintain naval forces able available. To attack any enemy naval units operating in these areas. Fortunately, the enemy's use of unrestricted naval warfare would annoy the U.S. government and, in the long run, could lead to the USA joining the Entente. Okay. The regular army is too small. We're going to say yes, of course. <laughs> We're going to say yes, of course. This will cost 600 points, MPPs. So that's 150 per core. Uh, I think the base cost is 235. So it's it's not an amazing but it is a benefit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is just simply better, so we'll do it. And the game has given us free reigns to start taking a look at the situation. For a second, I was like, oh my god, Fog of War is off, because <laughs> I can see all of France. You big dummy Tortuga, you're playing the Entente. Okay, <clears throat> let's take a look at the front. Um, they are not moving forward very much in the south. It looks like they are just going to try to push through the north. The BEF arrived. I don't know what I showed you from the end of the last turn, but there was a couple things. I don't even know if I, um, at the very, when I hit end turn, there was some stuff that played afterwards. So this time when I do this recording, when I hit end turn, you'll actually be there to witness it because there are a few events. Um, it shows you like the amount you're gonna make and all that, the money. Now you can see how much money we made here. So that's not a big deal, but um, there was also a decision we chose to take to confiscate the Ottomans' uh, dreadnought, and then we also took a decision to what was the other one? I I don't remember what the other one was. It'll come to me, or I'll I'll rewatch the video <clears throat> and um, see what it was and remind you. So how are things holding up here? I just kind of want to see how we're doing. Well, the fact that Belgrade hasn't fallen two turns in is I would say a good sign. 
we are going to be able to reinforce this back to full, which is fantastic. It's not, it's obviously desperately in need of reinforcement. So if we're able to move in and take Konigsberg while they're busy in the middle, I, it, it's a, a trade I'm willing to make. Yeah, I just really think that taking Konigsberg and just pushing through Marian and exposing Danzig and Grodons, it's going to force them to retreat their line back over here because this is a pretty stable line and the more time that we're given, the more time that this huge Russian army has a chance to push uh, west-northwest through all of this area. If we can take, for example, what's the supply of 12 place here? Yeah, Lemberg. It's right here. If we can take Lemberg, that's enormous. Uh, I can't wait to watch this from um, Agrippa's side. And like I said, uh, we haven't released the first video yet. This is the second video. Again, just want to make another uh, anti-spoiler alert. Um, although you'll be several videos in the past, do please do not reveal any information from Agrippa's videos. It could impact my... I mean, it gives me information I should not have. And another thing, I would rather not see people going to Agrippa's channel and disparaging his playstyle or saying he's not playing efficiently. Don't go to Agrippa's channel and start piling on all this <clears throat> you should have done this you should have done that because it's just going to discourage him from playing if you want to see these play by email multiplayer series with me and other people or even collaboration series most people are not um have their their pride is wounded when you are telling them that they're doing something wrong and their first instinct is to kind of recoil against that or entrench in their current position and you know bad things anyway so all i'm trying to say is not everybody is as receptive to criticism as i have as I am, and please don't treat other people like they are. You know, walk a little bit more on eggshells. Um, so please do that with Agrippa. Okay, I'm going to cut away here after that huge rant and contemplate my turn. So I've tried to spend some time catching up, and what are we going to do against the Austro-Hungarians? Is it kind of like an easy place to start, in my opinion? And we have very limited points, so this 11 points... Is it going to draw from our 67? I believe so. It does. So we have 56 points remaining, which I think should go here. 44 points should go here. And you may be saying, well, where the heck? <laughs> you need more need more points. Um, unfortunately, I think if I can even get one, 18, will I have 18? I will not have 18 remaining. I might even just reinforce this guy one in order to get my HQ. Um, the HQ is really important. It's just, I mean, it's just really important in order to... Um, I think having its strength higher reflect uh, like helps the combat. Uh, this unit is not entrenched, extremely low morale. I'm gonna pretty much sacrifice this detachment. <clears throat> I have two fives here. The unfortunate thing is, I don't think either of them are gonna be able to be reinforced this turn in order to keep Belgrade, which is entrenchment three. So I, I do want that one reinforced. I'm still happy to leave this area since this is a hill's cost of uh, plus one with zone of control it's plus two which makes it three movement points to move in uh, it's two movement points to move into here because it's road plus zone of control so no matter what it takes five movement points to go here which means that there's no way this area this spot can be um, uh, reached by any of the Austro-Hungarian units this turn or well during their subsequent turn and why, why does this matter to me? I want to keep it open so that the Belgrade unit has a place to retreat. As I, I think I mentioned already, that if they have a place to retreat, there's a possibility they'll retreat and only suffer half the losses of an attack that they normally would. Now, the problem is obviously that they retreat, and you know you may want Belgrade them to just die defending it, but I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to you know, force that scenario by essentially cutting off their avenue of retreat by blocking it. Um, yeah, so having this one at 10 is like critical to me. Having this one at 10 is not critical. So I might do this, that'll take us up to eight. Oh, so we can only do 18, which will give us 16 remaining, and that will give us enough to bring this one up. Okay, so we can do one and one essentially. It's just, it's so bad, but until they start moving in with these other units, I think that's the way to go. <laughs> we have this horribly wounded unit down here too, but okay, let's do this 18 because I think that that's the right move. By the way, is supply, are we generating supply in the best manner right now? Oh, 
Oh, I think it can only generate supply up to its uh, strength. So we definitely want that up to a nine. And now this one other point. Yeah, I still think that it should go here. This Valievo unit is most likely going to die. Uh, and I feel like we're just going to entrench behind them, knowing that that's probably a lost cause. Uh, I, I can't see... I really can't see any way around this. Um, well, I guess one thing we could do is shift this force south. This force... I, I guess it can stay there. And this new unit can come in... Yeah, I think this might be the best thing to do. Because their morale is so low. Let's just move them down. Move this new unit in. And they still have enough points to entrench, which I think we will. Seems more likely that they'll attack me from the north. <clears throat> This unit is also going to entrench. We're basically just going to pretend that that unit doesn't exist because it's not likely to survive. Uh, and then, yeah, well, this looks about right. Again, this detachment could come in here and just start building up the defenses. That would mean that Belgrade has no place to go. And I think that our, our hope is that we can essentially hold against uh, one more wave of three attacks. And I don't think that's going to happen. But at least Entrenchment 3 gives us a good like a hope. <laughs> so like moving a unit means that you lose some of your combat effectiveness. So if they move here and attack the Belgrade unit, which, hey, they still could do, um, hopefully they'll, you know, be punished for that. And, you know, these units, thank goodness, are at least a little bit weakened and you cannot reinforce and attack, but you can reinforce and defend. So there is a, a defender's advantage in that sense. I think Serbia is done. We have this game of what to do about the Austro-Hungarian Navy. We do have some position, some units in position to scout, notably this submarine. Um, I'm pretty sure that they do have some units here. Now, this submarine is purely a scout because with strength of five, I don't think, don't think we're gonna be able to get anything done with it. If we can draw the navy out, though, okay, here we go. So that doesn't count as our strike. It does not. So we can just keep moving up the channel. I'm, I'm a little bit surprised, in fact, that he didn't put a naval mine. And uh, another advantage of using your submarines is they have a pretty good chance of avoiding naval mines. And then you essentially scout the naval mine without any repercussions. So we'll put our uh, submarines here. Um, they're going to be our blockers or decoys. I don't think the Austro-Hungarians have any chance of inflicting casualties with... Um, with their units. I don't think that their um, destroyers have any anti-submarine uh, capabilities. We're still going to amass our fleet over here. And that's all fine. So this is the only other ship. I don't think that, yeah, I don't think that they'll take like horrendous losses from this submarine. So we're just gonna leave a picket of units. Um, and then I, I what I wanna do is actually continue to move. This one has So if I'm not gonna repair these light cruisers, the one thing I could do is at least resupply this dreadnought so it has supply of ten. It's a really, really minor nitpicky thing, but I don't think we're gonna need it this turn. So what I could do, um, always with the Always with the light cruisers. Move this light cruiser here. Put this dreadnought here just so he gets resupplied this turn. And we'll move this dreadnought a little bit closer. So he's in better position to react. Because we might find some juicy stuff with our submarines. Who knows? Okay, well, that's that. And... Oh, it's not that. Oh. So, sorry, I forgot to do something real fast. I need to... Turn on the right-click menu real fast so I can do Recon and Bomb, and now I can turn that menu back off. <laughs> See, I, I haven't su submitted that as a bug yet, so it's my own fault. But we might be able to do some damage to this guy. Uh, we're one away. That's a bummer. Okay, well, I think that just sit here then. Yeah, I'm not even going to do the attack. We really got to get this guy, all our units, up to at least attack strength of 7. This Dreadnought's going to sit here for a while. We'll leave this. This uh, Battleships are another good one to like have as a response force. So I'll just put this one here. 
has supply of 10. This dreadnought should be repairing. Whoops. And then you, you probably already saw. So this battleship, I think we're moving it in here. Especially with the Ottoman fleet eventually could be problematic. So I do want this one to... I don't even remember if I was moving this one east or west. But I think I'm moving it east. And I definitely want... Am I doing this exactly backwards? Submarines... Okay, I think submarines I do want to go this way. Yeah. And I think I want... I don't remember what my mentality was. And this one was here, so this one's going north. I guess that makes sense. I want more scouting units. Oh, yeah, I want blockade um, units. Okay, yeah, so submarines and light cruisers go north. Definitely. Definitely agree. Now, we want some more dreadnoughts to be in the south as a reactionary force. Um, and we also need to see what is here. Like, what is here that we can run into? So our light cruisers are going to begin scouting. I think our armored cruisers are the best at scouting. Like, they have the least amount of chance of having a problem. Let's see if we can kill their... Did I already kill their submarine? Yeah, I think our destroyer running into them makes the most sense. Okay, so this destroyer has acted, but now all our other destroyers can gang up on this submarine. Hopefully prevent... This is our, our means of... Uh, what is it called? Um, <laughs> it's our way of... Uh, it's deterring. We're trying to deter future submarine captains from attempting this. The dove, it got away. Our strike is over anyway, so we'll still go o over and like look for it, kind of. Yeah, so we want to be like right here, probably, so that he has to run into us if he goes anywhere. It's not perfect where we are. If he decides to go one, two, three, he will avoid us. I don't think that he will have that capacity. Supplies down to two, so we're looking good. We're at nine ourselves, eight, eight. Yeah, so we're in good shape. I think we're in really good shape. And now the question is, can this armored cruiser get far enough out to detect enemy ships? <clears throat> I really went for it there. That was bold and a little reckless. Probably could have just done the same thing with <laughs> this scout. Um... Okay, well, I guess this is we have found this one, so let's do the attack. And I'll just put him here. Yeah, we'll put him here just to completely block the movement. And I think I'll move this guy forward as well. That's as far as we can get. Okay, so let's just start moving down. There it is. Okay, that was a 4-2, which is obviously not good. The only good news is it exposed their unit. <clears throat> we might not, we might just try to go for this Dreadnought, although battleships, unfortunately, are better on the defense. Four and five. <clears throat> so they're really not the ideal unit. I've kind of committed myself. So, if they're better on the defense, though, that means that, honestly, we, we shouldn't be attacking them. I, I think we're going to try to kill this Dreadnought. Okay, it's a 6-6. Six, six. Ugh. Boy, that did not go well. So that ended up being, instead of a 6-6, six, six, it ended up being a 7-5. So we took two points more damage than I expected. Still, we'll have a chance to kill this Dreadnought. Okay, that was brutal, but we expected it to be. Okay, so this guy, he's the winner. Now, you have to clear. Avoid damage! Yes! Oh, yes! <laughs> it makes it all worth it. So now, we just need to line the front <laughs> with our battleships to try to prevent the retaliation, which we strongly suspect is coming. Now, that's not that's not really the end of this story, by the way, because we have this Dreadnought here. So I think what we ought to do is focus on, like, let's retreat with this guy as far as we can. 
ones? How do we pull them out the farthest? I think pulling them just down like... Oh, oh god, that was the worst. That, that was the worst case scenario. Okay, now I think we have to commit to killing this battleship. I knew it! Okay, well, here we go. <laughs> we'll probably lose a light cruiser for, for all this. We do have a Dreadnought who can come in, and I think we should honestly eliminate... Yeah, we're gonna need... We're gonna need the big guns down here, like, pronto. So I think we'll do this. I don't want him to go this way, though, because I'm a little bit afraid of submarines. Well, if we're afraid of submarines, let's just patrol the waters. Let's just do this. I did not even want to click that, but that was kind of a mistake. But yeah, it worked out. Um, so we can protect this cruiser. We're only going to be able to protect this cruiser. He can do a one-to-one. -one. I guess it's possible he could die. I'm going to roll the dice. Oh, just nothing happened. <laughs> Which is good. So he can get back to port at least. I think I want to see which of these three we can do the most damage to. Okay, 3, 5, 2, 6, 1, 6. So we want to kill one of these two. Boy, that's a tough call. Um, I think... I know this is a little bit bizarre, but I... Well, the battleship is better. It'll do a little bit more damage to us. And then the dreadnoughts are going to be rolling down to assist. And all we need to do is get behind that line. So yeah, we'll probably put both Dreadnoughts right here. So hopefully they just run into that. I don't know, we should probably shouldn't have put them right next to each other like that, but that's fine. And I'll just leave this destroyer here as part of the screening force. Let's go ahead and kill... They're better on the uh, defensive, the battleships. So I'm, I am just going to kill the armored cruiser. <sighs> wow! A 2-6 only ended up being a 3-5. That was two pretty miserable turns in a row for our Dreadnought. <sighs> okay, well... <laughs> womp womp. This guy's dead. We did kill... Okay. Th th okay, it's not bad. We have battleships. We have battleships. Anybody else can get into the fight? No, most, of, most everyone is already spent. The submarine is at least trapped. So our battleships do need to ride into action now and to save us. I... Yeah. I think we'll have to do this. I'm a little bit nervous that this will end up being a ship there or something, but... Woo! Got lucky. Because we do want to protect that one, and we want to protect these two. So let's go over here. What do I know? I think we'll just do this. Ah! Oh, we have our choice still. Okay. Let's do this. Avoid, avoid! Yes! Now, we still have one battleship left. And... Uh, this is a tough call. This is where I think it's a real tough call. We've definitely done a lot of good damage to them. Yeah, we need this Dreadnought. All hands on deck. <laughs> Okay, good. So we can go this way, and then like this. I think I'm willing to do that. Nice. That That's okay. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, that's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. And in theory, we're close enough to kill this destroyer as well. Got him. Perfect. Okay, well, we're gonna just vacate the blockade for a moment. <laughs> I think we'll leave this destroyer here. I'm still, I, I still suspect that the German submarines are coming. So I want my destroyers in the way when that happens. So, I mean, they basically decided to write, this is the Valkyrie, the Valhalla charge or whatever. Um, it's pretty, it was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, I think we're coming out ahead. We'll have to look at the losses after this, and we'll be able to tell. But, I mean, I have two Dreadnoughts which haven't even entered the fray. We killed their Dreadnought. These are so heavily wounded, but hopefully we just leave them in the back, never to be seen again. Okay, now one battleship remaining. One battleship. 
I, I kind of think we might want to... So I, I think we want we want to lure him up here. This okay, that light cruiser is just done for. I just I don't know how to save it. So if we go here, that's nine movement points. We still have six movement points. Let's see what we have the best option against. Okay, one to three. I think our best option is this one. Three to three. No, then they're gonna retreat. Let's do this. Nice. That was perfect. That's what I wanted. <clears throat> and then we'll just tuck this guy back a little bit down here. Perfect. Okay, good. Well, that's the naval side of things. That was just crazy. <laughs> things got <laughs> just crazy. <laughs> we have a few <laughs> light cruisers which haven't joined yet, but I guess we need them, huh? I guess we actually should call them into to action here. And then after this, we should be able to do the northern blockade without any without any uh, restrictions. So, <clears throat> boy, it's hard to say. I guess we'll just put this guy as far south as possible. <clears throat> so he's in a good place to react next turn. Something like this looks good. <clears throat> okay, good. And yeah, that, that clears out the entire fleet. <laughs> Jutland is happening very, very early, and I, I think it's going our way. Well, obviously, I've taken a few hits, but... Okay, enough about that. Next thing is a different front. Okay, well, instead of going to this front, though, I actually have an idea about how to do stuff over here. I'm going to go ahead and cancel the Serbians' research. I don't think they're going to be around long enough for it to matter. It's going to give us a little bit of spare points, and now we can actually reinforce these guys um, to full with 18 points left over. In fact, if I had been smart enough, I should have done this previously, um, and the HQ would have gotten up to 10. But we have some points left over, so we're ready for them next turn. And at least, thank goodness, I at least got this guy up to 9. So that's the Serbian front. And I, I, I kind of want to evaluate even whether the Russians need heavy bombers. So we're, I think we're actually getting to the point where we have enough people to defend i want to move this hq back to balone and i actually have plenty of good options here i can move this unit forward um or i can swap i think i am going to swap um, swap i think i will swap and then have this guy fortify oh he doesn't even have to fortify i guess he fortifies automatically but we can use a little bit of the British points for that unit to heal. You may be thinking, Tortuga, you're crazy. Defend the capital. Well, we can still get there, thankfully. I don't think I need to... It would be nice to fortify at the river crossing itself. Um, however, I think it'd be better for us to defend at the capital. Um, again, they get... If you don't move, this unit 8 would, have, would not have to move in order to uh, attack us. Although this unit does have... No, because that would be a 4... Well, this would be a three. Then we could fortify. That might even save Antwerp. Um, this is Belgian. So we could have these guys go into Lille. And the fortifications are there. They have entrenchment of two. That's pretty good. I'm not going to mess with it. It's going to be a little bit bizarre. But we're going to have the Belgians defending the French. The English defending the Belgians. But And I think this guy can get here. Three. Yeah, perfect. So we will do this. And you will now set up and entrench here. Uh, that looks fine to me. And this guy's going to entrench here. So we're our lines of entrenchment are, are set. Uh, yeah, as long I think that it's fine as long as this guy's covering that. Yeah, so we'll just do this. Probably didn't even need the south one. I don't know who's going to lose first between these two. Um, French. The commander is only a rating of three, and I've heard, I mean I've heard negative things about the French, I mean the British commanders. Um, the soldiers themselves fought like lions, but they're led by donkeys is you know one of the alleged sayings. But uh, I think we'll move this into Amiens, or we can move it forward even beyond that. That's going to refresh Amiens to a, um, a level ten for supply. So right now there's nines and tens everywhere. Really, I guess supply does not matter. Okay, so further south, 
because we actually do have enough people, I'm not, frankly, not sure what the best situation is for all these units. They're all entrenched. They're all sitting nice and pretty. Um, I don't know if we should have a unit here as like a backup. I feel like we're eventually going to have some backups and they haven't made any move against the front, which this all strongly leads me to believe that he's going to be attacking um, Russia first. And that's a worrying thing. Now, the fact that he's giving me Belgium to do that is interesting. Um, anyway, so we want to eventually deploy this cavalry out from here. Because it's just not going to defend as well. And we could swap them this turn. Do we want to? I don't know. So, one, two, three... So this guy has really, really good morale, but it'd be a three. I guess we could start setting up secondary defenses behind this line, assuming it, you know, just assuming that maybe it, it won't even hold. Um, so this would be a two. So the, let me move this guy back real fast. He only has entrenchment of one. This guy can get here. And we can actually, he, his entrenchment, I think we can get him to set up entrenchment nicely. Yeah, no, still zero one, but we committed. So we'll just do this have this guy in trench. Interesting. I don't know what the best entrenchment is. I'm kind of in theory interested in entrenching against Reem, but probably just take the number of sides down. Or I guess we can do it this way. That kind of covers all our borders. Uh, okay, then this unit, yeah, so I mean, we're t you kind of don't need a lot of these extra units. Or do we just, I'm willing to get up this line because it doesn't cost me anything to do it. Um, let's keep having these units move up so that if we start losing forces, we are ready to swap. So that's actually your job is to go all the way up to the north so we can swap out units which start getting fatigued. Uh, this unit as well, just start setting up the secondary lines. Um, I think this unit will just move into here and he'll just fortify and trench. I don't, we really don't need that top side because that's Verdun and if Verdun ever falls, boy, we got problems. Which means that we have, yeah, we, we have extra men everywhere, which is quite nice. And this unit, We'll probably have him tucked in right here eventually, but for now, I think I'll put him here. Yeah. And we want to shift forces up. So let's, um, let's, I might, let me just pause real fast and I can do rating checks. So this is a four, this is a six, five. So we want this guy controlling as many as possible. And let me just, uh, let me fix that real fast. Accidentally did a movement. This guy moved to the north. Uh, west from here. Um, just trying to get him shifted a little bit further. I guess we could... Nope, can't... Cannot repair this guy in Verdun? Wonder why. Supply issues? Certainly not supply issues. Huh. I don't know. So I think this is all we need to do. We can sit some... Interceptors in position to counter-strike or do something. I'll move him here. And I think... So I'm still under the impression that we're going to need more forces up to the north. Although things are starting to look a lot better there very quickly. Yeah, so um, this reminds me, before I forget, that I want to go to convoy maps. And I want to increase this to 20%. Because now I think that we need to shift all the available supplies over to the east. Russia is still going to give max of 5% to Serbia. Um, France itself is not going to supply Serbia. Uh, because they're still blockading this area. So it would just be a waste of points. So we, we will not be doing that. There's also one movement. I, I wanted to move this guy just one back. The destroyers should be only after we spot um, submarines. I'm going to move this guy into port here as well, just in case maybe we do want to spend some French points healing the destroyers, especially if we see that the French line is holding very well. Um, what do I do with the French? What if they like shift all their forces to the east? How do we... I don't know if we're going to be able to attack. I mean, I see like a cavalry. This is a little bit of a weak point. 
it seems like it's going to be very difficult to break the line. Um, the fact that they're not advancing hard does signal to me that they are probably not going to attack the Western Front. We've already, um, we've, they've already lost so much time. So my original idea of like trying to <laughs> attack in the east is now seeming a lot more suspect, but um, there are some basic things I can do. I can at least scout. Okay. Okay, well, we'll take Chernowitz. And this is a border, so we don't, we can't go any further that way. Um, do we have partisans? No. Okay, just making sure. So I might as well push in with this unit. And we also have this cavalry, which can take Colomea. I really think we're getting to the end. I think that they're really strung out at this point, the Austro-Hungarians. I'm going to want to shift some of my HQs up. We only have, we have a, a dearth, a big absence of HQs up by uh, von Rennenkampf. So for everything I can tell, Johannesburg is not occupied and we will occupy it. What do we want to do beyond that? I don't know. Um, so that's, that's a start. I guess we can check. What would the attack odds be? Very bad. We can always pull back after this. If Russia has 200 points. Should we be using that on to heal units? I think so. Yeah, I think we'll do that. This unit will push forward. We did take a few casualties. I don't, I don't know. How much do we want to set? Okay. This is a 2-0. This is a 2-1, so it's possible we could gain this territory there. Because this is an 8, I'd rather not move in with the 8. Uh, the 10 groups, so I, I need to push some people forward. I probably have to shift this one to Lublin, this one to Ran uh, Radom. This one needs to move here, because this guy needs to move here. The cavalry, this is another thing. We could actually march all the way to Marienburg, supposedly. Do we think that there's nobody over there? We have recon, we could just hope that we catch whatever's over there otherwise i can't otherwise i should be using this against um infantry by the way the cut no unit i'm assuming that this is going to be lost i'm not, actually was even debating whether or not to reinforce it because it doesn't look good um i still need to think about some of these things the things i don't need to think about we have this unit over here i want to operate this to the front um these guys are already moving and they're moving fast enough that i think i'm just going to keep pushing them forward uh, this guy, I don't know what I was thinking, but he didn't start on a rail. He would have been the most obvious choice for somebody to operate forward. So um, we'll just operate the Moscow unit to the front. We'll probably operate him to over here. I think this is the best bet, just to show uh, the Russians that we mean business. And his morale and all that isn't that bad. We are definitely going to heal the Lebao detachment. And that looks a lot better. We look a lot stronger there now. Um, just this unit is going to deter action in this area. Although, you know, I kind of do want to lure them out. So uh, maybe, I don't know. That's going to be a terrible attack. So we expect that the attacks are going to be very terrible. What I kind of want to do is not actually attack, just position. Position, surround. Um, if I can make it to Konigsberg, stuff like that. So Johannesburg is going to be a five for us, which means that that's not terrible. <laughs> it's not terrible because if I can get, let's see, Grodno is a 10. So 10, nine, eight, seven. This is actually a seven, even though it's, it's a five, we can, I mean, it's a five, but we can treat it as a seven because we, uh, yeah, we have points there. This unit is actually what? 10, nine, eight, seven, probably a seven. Um, I kind of want to advance my cavalry further forward. We have other units who can sit and defend, so let's do it. It's good scouting information. Um, the fact that we conquered this square means there's not anybody here, here, here. I mean, there's nobody in these surrounding hexes, which means that Konigsberg might be undefended. Can would anybody though, can anybody make it there? No. So you still have a four to one. You can make it here and have a three to one. 
<clears throat> will be <clears throat> this will be revealing our hand if we want to do that but it might be the right time i mean again it's like an issue of deterrence <laughs> i don't really care about the government unit <clears throat> um they'd have to move forward to attack kovno which we, i don't think that would go well for them this is a three to one uh nobody else is in position the grodno unit is probably best off being healed so that it more effective later in the future. Uh, I do want to look at supply. Sevens, sixes here. So this is nine, eight, seven, six. That's fine. So this is a, a seven. So this is a six. That's also fine. So we can definitely move here. It's okay with me. And where do we want to shift in though? Do we want to put pressure on Gumman in directly? I guess we could. We could surround and probably do the attack that way. I wanted to push through here though. So let's at least put this unit here. Let's have this one just temporarily fortify. Really don't need anything. I just, I need one side just against that unit. Um, although I could do the one, two, three. That might be the best. Just, just in case this guy gets, uh, these units, other, other units get antsy. Um, probably have this guy in trench as well. I'd only want... Yeah, I only want one unit there. He's not planning to actually entrench forever there. He's, we're planning to have him move out, but um, it's gonna draw fire. Uh, that's, no, I don't know. I, I actually think that's a good thing. So we're revealing our hand. I think we will move this guy in here and then entrench. The thing is, I, I, I feel like they can just do, do really, really horrible things to these units. My command range is out. These guys are outside of the range, and this guy who's in the range has already moved, so we can't equip him or det attach him. So this is why I think I need to bring another HQ up for this attack. And although we have like huge numbers, and hopefully Agrippa, or our enemy, but yes, Agrippa in this case, hopefully the Germans, just look at the sheer number and are intimidated into a defensive posture, because I, I think this is really all it is, is posturing. I might even move this unit back to defend against the main push. Uh, we don't want to lose Warsaw. So the other question is, should I just go for it? Um, I could basically put this unit behind enemy lines. I... It, it seems crazy, but it could work. If I take their secondary supply, that's an uh, in fortification. I can even go up to Danzig. It's going to take a lot of pressure off the front for a turn. They're going to have to send some units back to to actually do some... I don't know. That might be a good idea. I'm going to think about it for a little longer. Yeah, I probably need to take one last cut in the video. This has already been a super long one. And figure that out. Okay, well, I don't have a strong... I don't have a strong opinion on what the best thing to do here is. There's a lot of loose game plans. What I think, what I think I'm going to do is... I, so I suspect that he has three detachments. Another detachment here. And he has... So he's obviously gone actually with a Russia first thing, which means I, I need to react accordingly. So I'm going to move this unit here. Yeah, there's the additional units. This guy, he will entrench in the same direction. Uh, this guy's going to entrench to try to assist... And we're just going to start entrenchments. Now, uh, you may ask yourself, wisely so, what, but Tortuga, what about this one unit over here? He's screwed. <laughs> I was actually strongly debating whether or not to even reinforce him, but uh, I think we will, ultimately. Just because they're so valuable, you get I think you get pretty good bang for your buck. Now, I don't know whether or not this guy should be fortified north or south or whatever. I think I'll just do it like this for now. Um, so what I want to do is just scout forward like this. So this shows us what kind of information. So, uh, this, these are tens. My only concern is that you won't, that we won't get a chance. We have four points still, so we can still retreat very easily. This is, well, not very easily, but that we can get to here, which is what I want to do. I want to defend here. 
Actually, this unit will end up defending here, so this guy has to defend all the way back here. I like to have the scout around, but just to know what's going on, not I don't actually want him to get himself killed. Um, and that's the reason why I want I don't want to move him forward, because it would force a pretty strong reaction to them. It would slow them down. Uh, however, I think that if he dies back here, he'll just die. As in, he'll just... He will not be easily return to the pool of forces that Russia has. And I'm okay with this unit dying because he will be easily returned to the pool of forces that we have. I do want him to switch his entrenchment to this. Um, that's fine. And because he did that, I actually can't reinforce him. But he's going to get pounded. It's not going to be a good situation for him. I don't, I don't know what to say. We'll go ahead and hold at the river, though. I think this is a good place to hold. So we'll do this. And we'll also entrench there. Definitely rotate that one. Looking good. And this is our the leverage point. The two points that we want to try to hold are Red Alm and this fort. This fort is like the Verdun of the east. I don't expect that we'll lose it. We won't lose it without a fight. It's already got entrenchment three out of four. So... Where do I want this other unit, though? It would be nice to have some intel, but since he has... Uh, he's definitely doing a Russia first thing. So this is news to me. It's all, all kind of dawning before my eyes. We've all... Despite the, the Russia first push that they're apparently trying to do, which is going to change things in the West. I don't know what, what exactly, but uh, I'll have to think about that in the next turn. Uh, I also want to still try to take as much territory. Ideally, Prezismil. <laughs> Definitely Lemberg. If we can take Lemberg, I'll be extremely happy. And I don't think we're going to take this turn, because now we have... We, the whole shifting has to happen, right? I want somebody to shift here. To Lublin? Probably Lublin is fine for now. That'll give us... But I, I want Ivan Gorod as well. I don't think they have a unit which is capable of capturing, but let's just see. Do I have a unit which is capable... So, I'm, I think we might have to just shift... So we have enough. It, it, what I'd like is for a detachment to hold Ivan Garad. Maybe what I'll do in the meantime is just have my HQ hold it. Warsaw has 10 supplies, so yeah, I'm just going to have somebody hold it. So he can move 1, 2, and still have that guy in contact, I believe. Yeah, good. So uh, that that's actually perfect. And then this guy will be responsible for that unit, which he is. He will move closer, I think. And we had a discussion about what to do here. I think we will start pressuring Gumnen from all three sides, or two sides? Yeah, this unit can't get in there. It might be needed back over here now that I see what we're what we're facing. Although I did spare a unit in the south. Um, yeah, no, I think we can push a little bit, though, because they, they have their detachment here. It's interesting. We, we really... By trying to be aggressive, we probably shot ourselves a little bit in the foot. I think I'm still willing to commit the forces. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and do it. Because <clears throat> I don't think I don't think that they're going to have the capability to outflank. I mean, this is two, four. The most he can do is go here. Um, two, three, four to get here. They can't get to Kovno this turn anyway. I do want to move closer, though. You can swap? Maybe I should swap and move it. Okay, so now this guy probably should move here, then. Just have these guys swap, and then this guy re reinforce. I think we'll reinforce him. He's going to be a valuable unit. He probably should keep moving north. Maybe he'll take over Kovno for now. And the infantry is on the way, right? So we're, we're getting closer. Now, now knowing that what we know, I guess I've already transported that unit somewhere. <laughs> oh, yeah, we transported him here. That's not a bad spot. If I was to redo it, I'd probably put him here, but that's fine. And now we have, well, we have a pretty solid line. I, I suspect this whole line will be strained, knowing that they are going for an east first approach. We'll figure, we'll, we'll figure out a way to survive. And I, I would like information here. This is actually pretty important to me. So let's do this. Okay, so they do have some forces there. In that case, let's just... Um, this guy can entrench. I don't know which way we want... If we want to have him entrenched against the flanks, or how we want to do that. 
Unfortunately, this guy had to move here, too. It would take all of his movement. He wouldn't be able to entrench. So it might even be worth it not to. What's his... Eh, you know what? I think we're going to have to t suffer some. I I'm going to do this, which is a little bit... Mm, yeah. So he won't be able to retreat now, but I think it'll be okay. We'll reinforce this unit. We're going to bring this unit. It's probably the same thing going on here. I don't expect the cavalry will do much. So we're just going to charge right in. We're committed now. Uh, so 8, 7, 6. If we can get this unit to Tarnapol, what does that mean? 8, 7, 6, 5. So no matter what, this unit will not have the ability to um, be 10 supply. So it's only going to be an 8, which means we just need to get... So 9, 8, 7. So this guy can move here. And this guy can move here. No matter where he moves, he's going to be boom here. No matter where he moves, he's only going to be 8 supply. So I think that that still puts him at 8. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Yeah, as long as he gets... Or 6, 5, and 5 will be returned to 8. So I think that he's not going to contribute supply at all this next turn, unfortunately. Uh, we will push forward with the remaining units. And I think... Might have overcommitted forces to this flank. No, let's just move them down here so that we can push further to the south uh, as we need. And this unit is going to start moving up this way, expecting that we're going to need another HQ up in the north instead of the south. So just move them here for now. That's fine. It's basically not needed. So I think that we might be over... I think I, I'm going to keep them here. We're going to do some shifting, but I'm not sure exactly how or what yet. So we'll just do this. And I think that that's all we need to do for this. Uh, boy, this is going to be a long video. Uh, last thing we need to do is actually commit the Russian Navy. And I haven't really thought about this, but I, I, it's worth, I think, at least investigating where are the Germans here. We can actually do an attack against... I think it's worth doing, too. So, good. We did that. We'll pull back slightly just to leave room for the next unit to come in, and we're just trying to lower their morale. I stupidly did not check their morale before all this began. Definitely don't want to go through our own thing. And this guy's not, he could make it, but then, you know what, what are we going to do with this anyways? I think we will do it. Okay, that took down 10% of the morale, so that was actually pretty significant. And we'll leave the light cruiser and the armor cruiser. Light uh, armor cruiser is going to be a backup, so we'll move him a little bit further back because he's better in a response, aggressive attack response. Same thing with this one. So we'll put this guy here. Even uh, light cruiser of only five is hard to even move forward with. Can we deploy? We have no more mines to deploy, so we only have a fallback. I think what we'll do is leave these destroyers uh, in screening positions. And by screening, I just mean I want information. And actually, we want this guy... Sorry, change my mind here. Turn these guys to raiders. So, yeah, we can raid their lines at least. Seems like a good idea. There we go. Alright, very good. So, we will probably... Well, hopefully stop that. I don't think the Swedes are going to be that interested in joining the Axis. What is that? 20% versus Norway, 0%. So we can actually more aggressively attack the Norwegian um, line. This may start pushing the Swedish towards the... Uh, but I don't really care about that. Or do I? Actually, maybe I do. <laughs> I don't want to have to deal with defending Finland. We'll see. I'll back off if it ends up being a big problem. And I think that that is my entire turn. I will come back if there's anything. I actually don't think there's anything to change, so I will do one last sweep, and then I'll bring it to a close. Okay, well, I think I have a quick idea of what we're going to do, and I may do some of this stuff off camera even, but I think I'm going to reinforce some of the recon stuff. Um, I think that... Uh, I think that might be all we want to do, some research-wise. I don't think we care about the Russians doing research. I might even cancel their heavy bombers. Um, whatever. It's enough points to do some. I won't reclaim it this turn because I don't think it's going to make a difference. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yes, I do want to reclaim it this turn. Yes. Yes. Uh, because I want enough points to purchase, um, this detachment back. 45 points. Pretty good value, I think. So we'll purchase that. 
puts the Russians down to 27. Research-wise, we'll quickly just swim over here. We're at 171. We'll do the infantry weapons. I definitely want to prioritize the industrial technology after that. For France, same thing, industrial infantry weapons. I think it's just important to get that going first because it, it, it goes at a very slow pace and you can't speed it up, unlike the other ones, which you can invest more into. So with the 73 remaining points, we don't really have anything we want to do. We'll probably, I mean, considering they're doing a Russia first approach, we may even start investing that into the Navy so that we can pressure this area so that we can force invasions. I mean, lots of ideas, but I think that's going to be enough for this turn. I've rambled on far too long, so I apologize for the long video. We'll try to cut down in the next one. But for now, thanks for watching. Viva la France, viva England, viva Russia, and viva l'entente.